Welcome back to Dowler Models. So in this video, I'm going to be working on the Tami R1M again, and this time building the rear swing arm and wheel assembly. So as you can see, I've got all the parts off the sprues and everything ready to go. I've started doing some prep work on it already. So for instance, when you put this together, that piece there is just a butt joint onto there which is quite weak so I'll drill some holes in there as you can see and drill some holes through the point that it attaches there so I'll put some pins into that to give it a bit of a stronger joint um, I've drilled a couple of other holes as well ready for wires and things so that's where I'm currently at so what I'm going to do is put some glue onto this part here attach it to the other half and then uh, once that's dried I will get that I'll get the joints cleaned up and then uh, I'll move over to painting so I, I'll let that dry for a bit and I'll come back when that's ready right so I've got all the parts prepped and ready for paint now so as usual I'm going to start off with the primer which is this one grey filler primer from Zero Paints so I will stick the extractor fan on and I'll make a start so the first thing I'm going to paint is the wheel um, as it's a tricky complicated shape I thought I'll, I'll do this first so as usual start off checking the paint flow and then the way I attack it is just start with the spokes in one direction like this and just build up the layers and then do the other side of the spokes as well and as these are quite deep wheels it's a little bit tricky to get in but we'll get there and then once that the spokes are done for the main part we can then go over the actual inside of the rim and then we'll make sure that we've got the actual edge as well so I'll just check over that make sure I've not missed any bits but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to need another coat anyway but same same process on the other side. You have to take care when doing this to make sure you don't miss any areas, especially when it comes down to the colour coat. So like I said, this will need another coat anyway. So that's the first coat done. So I'm just going through doing the rest of the pieces so same process just look at any areas that might miss pain and make sure you get those I tend to try and aim for those first just so we make sure that we don't get missed and then you don't get any runs or adverse effects or anything if you try, if you paint all of that and then try and get into areas that you've missed, you can end up with problems, um, paint runs or whatever. So I'm going through all the parts and I'll give them all a couple of coats and then I'll come back to you. Okay, after I've got all those parts primed, I've gone through a few other bits and pieces. So I've painted the rear swing arm in gloss black from Alclab 
for the next stage along with the rear disc brake and I've painted a couple of bits like the paddock stand uh, with zero paints aluminium along with the sprockets off the chain so uh, the next bit that I'm going to do is semi gloss black so again zero paints I'm using for that so these are the bits that I'm going to do not that one that one that one that one that one that one so these are all going to be semi gloss black so if I move them out of the way to start with and then uh, turn the extractor fan on so same process as uh, as always Trying to check my sprays coming out and then just start misting it on You can see I'm turning the piece as I'm going and adjusting the angle of it so it gets in all of the areas. So it shows on camera there, it's completely covered. So I don't think that will need another coat. So I'm just going to run around all of these pieces in the same method. So it doesn't take a lot at all to give it a proper coverage that it needs. I'll finish off those little pieces and then uh, I'll see where I'm at. Okay, the last part for this paint session is I'm using titanium silver to do the um, tire stand and a couple of other little bits. So, just use, using this just to, to have a different variety of colour on there, just to break it up a bit because there's if I use all the same silvers and or aluminium on everything it'll start to look a bit bland and samey so just to break it up a bit and as I said and uh, give it some variety so this piece I painted black first I don't know whether it actually makes any difference or not with this paint but uh, I thought if I do that that's the bit that the size stand attaches to so I can use it as a comparison to see if it actually makes any difference or not colour wise so that's those bits done so the next bit that I'm going to do is I'll go off and mask this up to get that painted and I need to paint the polished aluminium on the uh, rear swing arm so for that I'm going to use this so I'll do that off camera I think um, and, uh, and then I'll come back I've had a few people ask me about masking and my method for doing so so I thought as I'm working on the um, rear swing arm assembly I'd show you how I'm going to mask this up so I'm going to mask up the rear caliper which wants to be black and this bottom part um, and then the rest of this will be painted with a gunmetal grey type colour. So I'll show you my method for doing that. So I get some masking tape. It's Tamiya tape, which I find to be the best for this. And then I just cut, rip off a strip and put it on my bench and then cut it into strips. So this is how I always start off. And I'll just Cut that bit there and get my tweezers and see where they've gone. And then you can position that about where you want it. And then get a cocktail stick and then just push that masking tape down so it 
follows the line of that part. And then we've got a nice crisp line following that around where it wants to be. So you notice down there, there's a bit of a step. So what I need to do now is get another piece and push that up to it. So look at where it is, where that gap is. in there, push that in, get my cocktail stick again and burnish that down so that follows the shape of the piece. I don't think it's picking up brilliantly in the light but I think you get the idea. As you can see that step there, just here, I'm just trying to get inside of. So, once I've done the main part there, I can move on to bigger pieces. So, I'll just cut that strip off there. I notice I'm not being particularly neat with this because I don't need to. And then lay that over, make sure it overlaps. And push that into the corners because we don't want any overspray under there. I'm just going to work my way around this piece. So I'll go underneath there next. So I'll tuck that under there. Like that. And then I can fold it over. couple of small strips along there so the first one on that side which will line up a bit better and then I can put a piece over there And then I should all burn this down. Make sure you've got no gaps anywhere that can get overspray underneath. Get it as you want it to be. If you have got any small gaps in there, you can use some liquid mask to fill it. This sort of stuff, this is the one that I use, but there's different ones available. So if I just show you the method that I use for this, just to fill a gap. So as you can see, I've used this stick before. So where you've got this join, and there's a little gap there, I'm just going to fill that. A bit there. Just means that I'm not going to get any overspray inside any gaps there. So that's my method for doing, for doing that. Depending on the sort of piece that you're doing, you could use the liquid mask for the whole for the whole area. So if I show you the demonstration on this bottom piece, which is fairly straightforward enough. So get it to follow the lines where you want it. I find with this one, I don't know whether they're all like this, but I find with this particular one it can creep away from the edges a little bit so if you do use it just be mindful of that 
if you put it on any edges that you need to make sure it has actually has actually sealed it. So I'm just going around like that, making sure it's all covered. Actually quite a lot on there, it doesn't need so much. Move it over to the back as well. And once that dried, I will go in just make sure that there aren't any gaps in it, any bits that I've missed. That has given it a decent coverage. So that's two methods that I use for masking up. So once that's dry, I can uh, I can move over to paint. Okay, so. I've got a couple of parts ready to paint up now. So I've got the rear assembly that holds the caliper and the rear disc. What I've done on the disc, if it shows up, is after I've painted the base black, I've gone round it with a coarse sander just to give it a bit of a key. So hopefully that will show through once it's painted. So I'm going to use the uh, Zero Paint Steel for this, which I've not actually put any airbrush yet, which is unlike me, but there you go, so just bear with me a second while I uh, load this up. So that's in the airbrush now, so I'll just turn the extractor fan on. So I can see what it looks like. So check the flow as usual. And I just want some light coats on this. So hopefully it's uh at least those scratches showing through. Them. It doesn't show up as much on camera, but there you go, that's what I'm And having the primer and the mid actually has a different, uh, different tone to it as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that off because I want the, uh, the centerpiece different shade anyway. So, that's it for that cover. So, I'll load up the airbrush with the metallic grey. Okay, so these are all painted up now, so I'm ready to unmask. So, as I said with that one, I just masked it off in a circle and I've just sprayed um, Alcloud dull aluminium on there. So, I didn't bother on the back because you can't really see that. And uh, But as you can see, I used blue tack as well as part of the mask on the inside of that disc. So, just work my way around. Remove that. And then on this side where I've got the masking tape, you can see how I've done it there is as I was going around. Didn't actually show you that, I just um, sort of pushed it in with my nail just to get it around the edge. When you look at that now, it's actually around the edge as well. So I'll get my blue tack and there's just a couple of bits that are left there, so just pick those up. So that's the rear disc done. I'll give that a wash and uh, detail it up a bit. And then this is the other piece I was working on. When she saw me masking up.
can see, hopefully, on the inside there. I'm going to lighten a bit if it actually shows you where that step is, which is what I'm trying to get to. I don't think it's showing up on the light very well. Right, move on. So that bottom part, where I use the liquid mask, what you need to do is just find an edge where you can get your blade under, and then just peel that off. Be careful if you use it something sharp that you don't scratch the paint underneath. So that was the other method with the liquid mask for that bottom part. So there you go. So again, a little bit of detail painting on that probably. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll put it all together. So that will be the next step. Okay, as you can see, I've got all of the parts prepped and ready now. So I've done some extra work off camera as I was going through. So the first thing is I've created this wheel rim pattern on the uh, on the wheel, as you can see. So that was masked off and painted before I painted the blue. Um, I've also put on a metal um, valve forgotten what the word was there, um, which was from one of these. Um, so I've got one for the back and then one will go on the front wheel when I get to that. So I've got the chain guards, have got carbon fibre over them and they're ready to go on as has the rear hugger um, and I've also put a couple of washers on the top there just to uh, give it a bit of detail. So the other thing I've done is the kick stand, the side stand. So it didn't have this part of the um, that you push down with your foot on it, so I've scratch built that, made that. I've added the spring there and put some washers on um, just to detail it up a bit. Um, some washers on that, which I don't think I showed on the last part, and then. Uh, just giving everything a wash so you can see on the back there where the uh, tensioner is. Just got a wash around there, just brings out the details a bit and then the other bits as well. So that's what I've been working on. So like I said, this part's now the uh, the final assembly of, of this component. So the first bit I'm going to do is attach the chain guard parts. So that part will go on there so I'm just going to do a tri fit first just to make sure it goes as I want it to, which it does. I'll get my tub with some super glue in it. Put a little bit in there. And a little bit in there. It doesn't need any more than that. And push that into place. Try and look at super glow on the bench, and then the second one goes on the inside of here. So that sits, if we can work it out properly, like that. So that one goes in there, and that one goes in there. So I'll get those glued in. These are going straightforward enough as you'd expect from Tamiya. Um, the rear hugger, what I've done is drilled some holes. One of the pins has come off there, which doesn't really matter, but uh, I've still got one. This was just a butt joint, and it's got this little bit there that sits in the groove, and it didn't line up perfectly well. 
so just having that, uh, that pin there sufficient, you can see how it sits there. So one, one pin sufficient to hold that, so I'm not too fussed that the other one's falling out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around here. I don't want loads because I don't want it fogging up or making a mess or anything. It goes on there like that. Just check that it's positioned properly on the inside. If you can see that. And then I've got the chain. Which will fit. It's got, if any of you are aware, familiar with these chains, they have a split in them to get it through the swing arm. So you can see I've painted this up anyway. Um, so the actual links were steel and then I used some Samurex 11, the enamel, to bring out the, the pin heads. So it just gives it a little bit more detail. So that sits on there like that. And that doesn't require any glue. So I'll put that to one side for a minute and then I'll work on the rear brake assembly. So, as I showed you before, I've detailed some of this. I've got another wire to put on once it's attached to the swing arm. Excuse me. Something you can't avoid when you're recording a video, the phone's ringing. Right, yeah, so I detailed this, put the um, bolt heads on, put a wire in there, I've got another one to go. And then that uh, RB Motion one at the top for the, the uh, banjo fitting which just looks neat. So I've got the disc goes in here. So the instructions say to assemble this and then put that back part on after. I prefer to do it all in one and paint it all together. And if you slot it up there carefully, it does fit. And I know it does because I tested this. There you go. It's a little bit tight, but it does go in. It just makes it neater for uh, for painting and then I've got this part here attaches onto the back I'm just checking if there's any orientation to that yes there is a hole here which attaches to the disc so I'm just going to run a little bit of glue on each of these and then there's the notch on the back of the disc that that lines up to. So I'll put that on there, and it goes over the hole, and that all pushes together. So then the disc assembly rotates in that, and then that will attach to the rear wheel, and that will all move freely. So I've got this piece here which will attach onto there. I don't, again, I don't need loads of glue on this. This is with a 2K clear on it, a good tight fit anyway. So I'm just running a little bead of glue around there. And again, there's a notch here to line it up. So that's that bit done. And then this one is just a dry fit into there. doesn't require any glue at all so once it's in that will move freely and then the last bit for that is to attach all of this into here which is the fun part find that you might have to uh, maneuver things out a little bit and squeeze it a little bit to get everything to fit. So I get the chain over there and I can maneuver that over that bit and I want the 
kept the caliper in the right orientation so that goes that way. So that all fits together like that. And then you've got some movement in the wheel. So the last bit to do on there is to fit the rear axle. And because I'm using the jig, I'm using bits of aluminium tubing to, uh, to replace the screw because obviously the screw is not hollow so you wouldn't get um, you wouldn't get it on the jig so something's not quite lined up properly for that to be not going through so there we go a bit of effort. So just push it with the cocktail stick a bit, it's sufficient. So you can see it starting to come through there and it's on there. And then you've got this cap which just sits over that side if I don't drop it. So again, little tabs on that side and they fit in on there and that will hold it all all in place. So I'll get that glued on now. And that will hold that to that rod in place as well. So that's that bit done. Just realised I was leaning on that rear hugger so it's uh, moved it which I don't want. So, there we go. That is very tight on there. Obviously, build up paint is sufficient to uh, to not give that a lot of movement. So yeah, that's that bit done. So next is to put it into the frame. So I'll put that to one side. Put that to one side. Put it into here. So I'll come back in a minute to do that. Um, give this all a chance to settle down and make sure this glue is dried and everything. Okay, so I've got the uh, swing arm mounted on the jig to get it all lined up. So as I've shown you in a previous video on lining that up, getting it all orientated and everything. I won't show you about that on this one. So, for this part, I've got to take it off the jig to get everything lined up. So, what I need to do is move that out of the way because it needs to fit through there, which isn't particularly straightforward. It's not like Tamiya to do this because they normally put the swing arm assembly in. Um, the rear suspension assembly in the swing arm and then attach it afterwards. They've chosen on this one to uh, do it differently and made it quite tricky so hopefully in me showing you this you can see what I mean and I think it's because I put that on why it's not moving why I can't get it in because I did that other step. Okay, I just turned the camera off for a second just so I can fiddle with it, not off camera, um, just see what what's the best option. Because I've put this part in there, when you move the spring back, it doesn't go into that housing as the instructions would say, which is interfering. So what I've done is I've just pulled this out enough to give me some clearance, as you can see. So now, when I fit that through there, it actually fits as I want it to, and then I can continue with the rest of the assembly. So that's what happens when you decide to modify things and do things differently. It can sometimes backfire on you. So now the tricky part is getting 
that front end of the swing arm through there. So everything lines up. So if I put that in there just to show you, so it goes all the way through, so it's lined up. And again, I'm not using a screw, I've got another piece of tubing which I've measured to the right length. So I can push that through. And that holds that in place. And then that means now that I can put this back as it should be. So which way does it go? It goes that, that way goes in there. And then I've got two bars that go across there, so that's okay. So, all the fun of uh, making changes to things. Mm. I think the way that that, uh, that hole is there is not quite big enough for that to go through, so it's going to need a bit of persuasion. So, again, I'll do that off camera. So, I've got a screw that's going to go in the bottom of there. One of the few screws I'm actually going to use. So I'm going to put it back on the jig for now, just so it's got some protection. And move the reel forward a bit. So if I just put that through there for now. position this middle one where it needs to be in a second. So, I'll sort all that out off camera anyway. Um, so the next thing that I need to do is attach this hose. So again, I'm not going to do it all on camera, but that needs to go into that banjo fitting there. So that's just going to fit like that, but I just need to trim it down a little bit so it's the right length. and. Uh, and route the cable where I want it to go. So I'll do all of that off camera and I'll sort that pin out off camera. So, what have I got left to do? I've got a couple of bits down here which go onto that suspension. So let me go and grab the screw which I've not prepared for and I will come back in a second. Okay, I've done a bit of work well, the camera wasn't running then. So, I put the screw in down here, which is not really visible, and I put this first um, bar in, which positions the rear uh, swing on where it needs to be. I've also pushed that tube through where it needs to be. So, just to do the second side. So, I need a bit of glue. some plastic cement for that because there's no um, there's no paint on those parts so I just ran some glue on the inside of this carefully so if I find somewhere that I can actually hold it and position it in place Just wants to go on there like that 
And again, that's another piece that I'd, uh, I've put some carbon fibre on just to make it look a little bit different. And then the last piece is the side stand. So again, I'm not using screws for this like the instructions call for. So put some glue in there. What I've got is I just, as you can see there, just put some pins in the back of it. so I can actually see what I'm doing because this is a little bit fiddly so I'm just going to tip it up just so I can see the underside of it and make sure well it's focusing for you but it's just so that I can see see in there under the block where it goes just to make sure it's actually lined up where I want it so that's where I want the side stand to be so there you go so that's what I'm going to do on this video like I said there's a couple of little bits and pieces that I'll finish off off camera and then uh, I'll post some photos up on my Facebook page of the of the completed sub-assembly so thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.